What is up everyone? Welcome to another Northgard video on this channel. Today with a little patch note review for the new SWAT in Solace update. Uh, this update is right now in the open beta, so everyone can just join into the fun. And if you also want to do so and you don't know how, I'm just going to quickly explain how you can do that. Uh, down below in the description there will be a little code uh, which you will need to copy. Then you will go into your Steam library. In your library, you got to find Northgard, right click on it, you go onto properties. I have it on German right here, but uh, you go onto properties here. Then you click onto betters, you uh, paste the code into this little field right here, you check the code, and afterwards uh, the better new update will appear. Usually it will be put onto none, and as soon as you put it back to better, uh, you will see how it downloads over here, and as soon as it's downloaded, you can jump into the better. If you want to play normal afterwards again, you can just go into none again, it will download the normal version, and you can play the normal version again. So yeah, have fun in the better, and we are now going over the changes that we can find throughout the better here. Uh, just to make sh clear from the start, all of these changes are, are subject to change, that is why the better is here, so a lot of the things that we will reading right here might be changed through the live update. So yeah, just take it as a little preview right here of what might change throughout the update. We're gonna jump over these things right here, uh, because we have a bunch of changes and I just wanna uh, quickly go over it, because yeah, we have really a lot to go through with, so yeah, let's not lose too much time and just jump right into it and see what changes are yeah coming towards us. So as first, we have a new UI rework. So the full UI in the menu is changed. Um, also, there are a few small changes in the uh, in-game UI, but most of the changes are actually in the ma main menu user interface. Looks a lot better now. I heard a few people that said they feel like it's a little bit too dark. I can't completely uh, say how it actually is because I usually play with a little bit brighter picture than it usually is through my NVIDIA settings, but as uh, so for me personally, it looks perfect. If it is a little bit too dark for you, uh, it might still be changed through the live update because I heard a few people complaining about it. But I personally can't really say I had any problems with it. I really like the brightness of it and the general look. It looks really, really cool. Um, for example, the single player mode now has a lobby similar to the multiplayer one, allowing to set precisely the difficulty, clan, color and a, a team of AI clans. So you can have now a lot more power over your single player games, which before used to be just free for alls, right? If you jumped into a single player game, it were free for all with a set amount of AI players you were playing against. Um, right now you can really set it up like a multiplayer game, which I personally already did. Like if I played a team game against AI, I just opened up the multiplayer lobby and filled it up with bots. But now it's a lot easier to make that happen and it should be a lot better for newer players to understand how they can really customize their single player experience. I really like that, I really like that, gotta say. The multiplayer uh, also got changed quite a bit, so it is possible to explore the list of existing lobbies when you already created one. So let's say you're sitting in a lobby with two people for a whole long time waiting for a free 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 to happen. You can now also browse through the lobby pictures and see if there are other free 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 lobbies open, which you might want to jump into because you're waiting too long or whatever you want to do, right? Maybe you just want to jump into a free fall or anything. So uh, really cool to being able to browse the lobbies while you are already in one. And the filters are now a lot better. So you can now filter a lot more to really only see the games which interest you. And I think also the, the general lobby screen looks a lot different uh, than before and a lot more appealing in my opinion. The first times you might have a little bit of problems to come with the uh, little icons you have right now, just since we have come to just uh, yeah settle with the uh, way you were creating lobbies before. I think it looks a lot nicer now and yeah, really, really nice and big fan of the changes of the UI, to be honest, even though I need to get a little bit of time to get into them because I just got so used to the old system, right? So 
the clan select selection also the backgrounds representing the different clans are now animated looks really nice can tell you that and there are more information about the unique aspects and overview of each clan so especially helpful for newer players so they can already before the game look a little bit about what the clans actually do especially if there are clans that you might haven't really seen right uh, imagine you're a new player not really bought any dlcs and somebody picks the clan of the rat like you can get a little bit of an idea of what this clan even does and uh, yeah what you come to expect playing against it or with it so the multiplayer and glory point system so the ranked system got a few changes right here and through these we are just gonna read over because there are quite a few changes and they're quite important in my opinion so our current system was not ideal and we are aware of the issue and we will try to address it step by step. It will take time but there are a few steps towards what we hope will be a fairer system that will distribute players more evenly. Uh, we have reworked our uh, glory point as calculated at the end of the game. We will use the full scale of our glory point system so you will be able to go from zero glory points to up to thousand plus glory points so there are a lot more glory points around now and there are also other changes coming within it that we are getting into right now so you will no longer get stuck into your progression after hitting 400 glory points which were a big problem before uh, there weren't really players coming to rimsteel anymore since uh yeah the first change of the ranking system so we will add a new uh, tier, it's Gemstone. It will be between Gold and Rim Steel, and at the start of the season you will be starting at 300 GP. So more like a real ELO system, you know. Uh, usually in an ELO system you, were, uh, you get put somewhere in the lower end, but not really at zero GP, so you need to play your way up. Because there will be players which start out with a little bit higher skill set than others, so if you are not good enough to be at 300 GP, you're just gonna drop down a little bit, or uh, if you are better, you will not be needing to really start at the lowest tier and maybe just destroy the games for newer players because you were a player that like played a bunch a year ago and now you jump in, you're on zero GP and yeah, you're just gonna <laughs> pile through them, let's say. Uh, yeah, we'll get the game experience for players on lower tiers a little bit better because they can now actually play against players on their skill level, making the games a lot more fun, I imagine. So, um, in the first 10 games you will win or lose more GPs, so you should reach your rank closer to your skill level faster. So, yeah. Basically how a lot of other um, ranking systems work. The first games are very, very important. They will give you a lot of glory points and later on it will go lower and lower because the ELO system expects to have you put already into a spot where you basically belong, right? It's because you, uh, yeah performed like that in your first game so uh, makes it easier to reach higher ranks a little bit quicker if you're really really good or you won't have that much of losers going on if you're supposed to be on a rank a little bit lower than you are at that point so also family share account will be not be able to play ranked games probably got some problems i can't imagine which and you will only be able to enter the lobby if you are the same range of gp as the host which is a 150 gp difference right now so if i'm in the lobby with 300 gp and you are 451 gp you cannot join my lobby anymore um which is a little bit closer than it were before honestly because we now have 1000 range basically of glory points i think the um yeah players jumping into a lobby like for example a gold player could never ever ever join a stone lobby anymore which is generally pretty good it makes the ranking uh, naturally a little bit better on my streams we were oftentimes yeah not caring all too much you know i'm not really trying to grind the ladder on my stream so it were pretty nice that we sometimes had players that were a little bit higher in uh, the rank and then basically evening it out with players lower in the rank but that oftentimes didn't really work out right so uh, I really like that they generally changed it maybe uh, makes the ranked experience a lot better in general and probably also makes all the games a little bit more evenly distributed even though it means that maybe a few players on my streams if I play ranked games aren't able to jump into the game that shouldn't be the most important thing there it is way more important that people are able to yeah, have a good ranked experience if they want 
so because that's what the rank system is for right it is just to get you more evenly distribu distributed skill levels throughout your games that's basically what it's for to get you a better game experience so <clears throat> As we said in our first iteration, it will need time and experimentation to improve it. That's definitely true, right? That is what the beta is for. And even after the beta, there will most likely still be some problems popping up at sometimes, but it goes around like solving these problems and trying to get the best ranked experience you can get, right? So uh, military rework we have right here. That's a big one. All the military paths got changed and yeah look a lot a lot more interesting right now i uh yeah i guess we're just gonna go over it so we know what we're going on um yeah we can just read this little text here currently in Northgard, strategic choices offered by the military path are not equally competitive you will almost always pick tactician for the dodge chance that's true and then for war cry uh, some clans like Kraken, Bear may pick Conqueror for Bloodbath or Veterans. Note concerning Guardian, strong in duels and only in a frustrating way. Yeah, that's really cool. Like as soon as Guardian actually works, it gets super fr frustrating to play against because he just always puts out new, um, how were they called? Like the militias? Uh, were it called militias? I'm not 100% sure, but you get some uh, military units in... Uh, yeah, predetermined frequency and that can be really frustrating to play against if you are clearly having the better army you have the better eco and the guy is just only surviving because he picked guardian and uh, like it gets an infinite amount of units feelingly like it is it infinite but it feels a little stupid um only the clear clans really play with the military paths because they are the only ones who gain military xp for it uh some more than half of the game's players might not even get to play with it in addition to all, you will produce only one type of military unit, the one you forged, except for a few clans that don't do that. So you try to shuffle things around and give you the possibility to choose a military path earlier that will promote a playstyle you want to follow for the rest of the game. We change the weapons forge effects for almost all of the units and they will give an ability now. Warriors will not be the only cool kids on the block. Interesting, interesting. Let's see. So. Uh, the first military path right here is leadership. This is the war chief uh, centered path. I would say maybe that what the tactician pa path were before because that seemed more like the uh, war chief focused one. Uh, the first one you will get at 50 military XP, so really, really early into the game. There you will get a bodyguard. Uh, the bodyguard we already know, right? I don't think we need to talk too much about that. Uh, at 500 military XP, your war chief will get armed wing of the clan. So your war chief benefits from all weapons forged. So if you forge different uh, weapons for different units, your war chief will reap all the benefits, which can make it pretty strong if you go for different upgrades on different units. That is at least what I think the fault is behind of that. And we'll see if that will actually get implemented into the games and make the war chief even more of a center unit as it, as it already were before. Uh, then we have the first line of defense at 1500 military XP. Your chief gets a 10% defense bonus from uh, for all units in the zone. Oh, okay, so basically like an aura giving to all the units around you and the 10% defense bonus for all your units, that's pretty important, that means not your teammates units most likely, is still a really 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 big thing because 10% defense can in big fights where like 15 warriors against 15 warriors fight can be the difference maker between there. So really cool change here, I enjoy that, let's see how that actually works out in game. At 3000 military XP, you will get Rally. Your War Chief can use the Rally ability. Your military units gain 30% attack speed and movement bonus for only 5 seconds. But, dude, you can run away from certain situations with that. You can uh, get a heck of a lot of <laughs> attack power with 30% attack speed throughout a fight. So, yeah, I like how uh, it really gives you different situations there and uh, like different abilities right there in different situations and i really like the ability to maybe run away with the movement speed out of a fight that you didn't want to even though getting 3000 military xp seems to still be pretty hard to reach but if you get it it can be really really strong so now we have the guardian tree the defense centered path and let's see what has changed throughout that 
Um, at 50 military speed, you gain access to a new building, the Watchtower. You might have already seen a photo of that around. Uh, the Watchtower scouts nearby zones and produces military XP. Their upkeep is less imp important than uh, defense towers. So there is less upkeep going on for the building? I didn't, don't really know yet. If you know it, feel free to drop it down in the comments. I hope it is just a little bit lower than for a defense tower, to be honest. At 500 military XP, you get Call to Arms. Call to Arms is a passive ability placed on your town hall. Every six months, the homeland sends you militias to send to help your own territory. That's basically the same one as before, I feel. The militia is a different mili defensive military unit that cannot leave allied territory. You can uh, have a maximum of one militia in your territory for each level. Okay, okay, interesting. So yeah, you still get the militias coming home, which I thought were actually the frustrating part about the defense centered path, but it might have not been honestly didn't play that much against it but i feel like uh it, it is more of something that really makes sense in a dual um landscape right in team games a few militias won't really help you out when your teammates getting killed but in a duel it can really really make a difference so uh maybe i don't have the best expertise to call on guardian right here but i feel like this were the thing that were the most frustrating about it right i'm not 100 percent sure though so, suppressing fire at 1500 military XP, you gain a free watchtower upgrade each year. So, watchtower must also be the new one over here, right? Um, human units within a zone that contains an allied watchtower get 10% defense. So, yeah, everyone, everything that is humans, I think that will not count ghosts, giants, yeah, everything of the special units you might get, right? Uh, hold the line, you will get at 3000 military XP. You can place a spike walls uh, you can place spike walls in a zone that will damage when em when the enemy tries to engage and that seems to be really really interesting it feels like it's permanent right uh if that would be something that is timely set it could really open up the ways for different uh ideas you could go for but i would really like to see somebody who's playing a more defensive play style to go for 3000 military xp and get the hold the line here uh, it would really be interesting if you could just hold up an opponent like let's say you're with three guys in the zone uh in your zone at home uh, your opponent wants to attack they want to engage into that zone but you get the spikes up so they will if on top of the uh disadvantage they have on pushing into your tile also need to push through a spike wall that can make it really hard and maybe make uh, other win conditions a little bit more viable right trying to go for lore or something and just trying to uh yeah how could you say it fortify your home zone <laughs> let's say it like that um let's see how it plays out it can also be something that can end up frustrating it if you are not able to attack your opponent even though you're way ahead in army and everything else and they just push lore and make use of such lores to defend themselves but if it's really really balanced out well then it can be really fun and open up the way for new strategies right really hyped to see how it will be uh, looking in the actual game so let's think we have legions the last path yeah, the last path. Um, so we stay on three paths right here. I weren't really sure if they actually got a fourth one in, but we still have the three over here. At 50, we will get military base. Uh, when there's more than one military unit, a military building in a zone, they produce military XP. Ah, okay. Reduce the cost of military buildings by 20%. Interesting, interesting. Uh, at 500 military XP, you get war effort. Reduce the base cost of military units by 25%. Does not affect the cost per warband. Oh, that is pretty good. That is pretty good. 25% less for every unit. That can make quite a big difference there in game, I can tell you. So, veteran at 1500 military XP, so a little bit earlier. Uh, bonuses from military buildings are 50% more powerful. Oh, interesting, interesting. Okay. And at 3000 military Tyri XP, we get Bloodbath. After 10 dead units in a zone, you gain 30% attack power and 30% defense for 20 seconds un or until they leave the zone. Oh, okay, okay. 
that is still really really good i like that there's a timer now on it so you can actually go out of the zone let your opponent lose the bloodbath and then go in again that weren't able be you weren't able to do that before as soon as they had, had bloodbath you sometimes just needed to let them take the tile so the bloodbath goes away and you can then engage into them and a little stupid now you at least have a 20 second window where you can just wait let them take the advantage of you pushing back into the tile but um their bloodbath will be gone and they will not be completely insane anymore so yeah pretty good uh only thing i would like to know is if that means 10 allied units does it mean 10 of my units so only of the clan that has the bloodbath or does it mean 10 dead units in general does your opponent also count I think it only counts for your team and I think it counts for your whole team, but uh, it might also only count for you. If it's only counting for you with 10 dead units, it doesn't, it isn't really that good, right? You go with 15 units in there, 10 of your units die and 5 of them gain these benefits. That's not a big game changer. If that means your allies units, then you could have a lot of units left and they can get really, really strong. So yeah really comes down how it's called right here i feel like uh, it is like calling for all your teammates so it should be pretty strong but it's also three thousand military xp right it's not easy to reach there so we also have a few general changes we know that forging weapons is a lot of investment into your eco and you didn't want to forge different weapons so we reduced it to give you an incentive to do so okay so the weapon upgrade cost is now only 50 crowns and 5 iron but it o and it also takes 3 months to forge so it's a lot easier to get definitely. Uh, we removed all the stats from the forge now if you want to improve it you have to upgrade camps except mercenaries. Ah okay okay so you now only get abilities through foraging and the uh, stat bonus which you get like 20% better attack or 15% better attack i'm not 100% sure anymore but uh, it is gone now you will only get the, the ability what you were getting when you were forging them and the abilities we have right here uh, the warriors have charge increased run speed when the engaged target is close enough and apply breached armor 10% less defense on the first hit i think the breached armor is new i think it is new right and uh yeah the charge should be the same as it were before the shield bearers have a shield wall when entering a zone with enemies this unit will have 40 percent bonus defense during five seconds ah, okay okay so it's something when entering a zone with ah okay that's neat so you really want shield bearers right now to push into the tile and take the disadvantage away a little bit because they will get 40 percent less damage right not really 40 percent less damage they will have 40 percent more defense which is not exactly 40 percent less damage but you will get a lot less damage and i think most of you know what i mean like shield bearers will be the betas right now right and if you are going for multiple upgrades that means more people might also have shield bearers upgraded to being able to do something like that or at least players will try to upgrade different units um so you will usually see the whole spectrum then throughout the games which should be pretty cool uh, the X-Rows will get double attack. The second attack of this unit is quicker, okay? Uh, would be nice to know what is about the third, second, uh, third, fourth, and fifth. <laughs> if it's only the second, it's not that great. If it's every second attack, that, that seems to be pretty good. It's a lot of damage there for the X-Rows and might make them pretty, pretty strong, honestly. Uh, trackers will get precise shot. Uh, trackers collect 30% more trophies when killing foes. So that's the most important thing for the um, Lynx clan right here because the Lynx clan has nothing of these trees, right? They only have their hunting path. Therefore, uh, it will be really, really important for them to kill all animals or like also if you went, went for wild hunt and that is a lot easier to get right now, right? Uh, the wild hunt is now way closer. Uh, it is on the left tree i think the first one now they, they also changed the, uh, the lynx clan a little bit i think we will get into that later but um 
Yeah, it's also a lot easier now to kill drawers and other stuff to get trophies. And now you really want to watch out to have trackers doing that if you were upgraded then. So that's pretty cool. More trophies are always great. Makes the general uh, Lynx clan a little bit stronger if he's able to go for it. Even though you lose a little bit of damage on the trackers, right? You now need to upgrade tracker huts. And I think you would also do that usually, right? I think the uh, Lynx clan likes to play feeling safe, therefore upgrading a lot of these. Uh, just by the way, they're also super, super cheap, <laughs> the upgrades for the trackers. So, Skirmisher, Dragonkin, Valkyrie, Shamans and Mercenaries remain unchanged, so just as they were before. I don't know that they, I don't think they really needed to change, right? They're all, they're all pretty solid. So, with the removal of stats from the rapid imp uh, improvements, certain units will have a real disadvantage, such as, such as the tracker and axe throwers, because of their range, so we adjusted them accordingly. Oh, the extra range is increased by f uh, a little 40% right here. Little, little 40%. <laughs> the tracker's increased range is by 10% and their attack is increased by 15%. And the bodyguard's uh, health is increased by 10%. Shield bearers increased defense by 1% and their projectile resistance by 10%. So all of these units are just like a teeny tiny bit better. I think the 40% range by extra makes a wolf clearing in the start of the game so much easier you don't need to wait for the upgrade anymore to do like wild stuff you can also do it like now with the normal axe throwers and i think is pretty good so uh the recruitment cost has, has changed this is a really 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 big change here let's see uh, the cost of recruiting of the units has changed. <laughs> now rather than each unit costing plus 6 more crowns for each military unit you already own, the cost increases by plus 6 for each military unit of the same type and only by plus 3 for all each military units of different types, allowing you for a more diverse warband and a reduced cost. So you know what I mean, right? It's not, not easy to say, like if I get one warrior, it will cost 30 gold, the second one will cost 36, the next one will cost 42. It always goes up by plus 6. If I now have 3 warriors though, um, the next x thrower that I will get will only cost 30 gold plus 3 times plus 3 for the warriors. So the next x thrower I will get will cost me 39 gold instead of a warrior if I would get that. That would be 30 plus, uh, would be 54. So 39 against 54 gold. So the x thrower will be a lot cheaper then. So that really should make it able to uh, go for more diverse warband because at this point you think about, hmm, the upgrade now is also a lot cheaper for the axe thrower. Maybe I should just diversify my army. I think that's a really smart step to going towards that. I feel like that's something that Shiro wanted to um, get into the game a lot more often. They always wanted to diversify the armies a little bit. Which has also worked in duels and everything, but in team games it were just stuff. Uh, okay, you go axe throwers, you go shields, and you go warriors. Now everyone will need to mix up a little bit because their units just get a lot more cheaper like that. Maybe the bear clan and other clans that really have huge bonuses on a single uh, on a single unit will most likely go for it. And obviously, like the dragon clan, just has they they don't get another choice, right? But um, it's a really cool change, and I hope that it. Actually Actually grabs because this, uh, having different units in your army just makes it a lot more interesting to micro, right? So everyone will have a few extras to micro and not just one player. I think that's pretty cool, honestly. So we have a lot of clan changes here, which I'm definitely just gonna fly over here because we're already in here for over 27 minutes. <laughs> so we're just gonna quickly fly over these here. I think these are also most subject to change because a lot of these things will be tried in the better. Um, let's see how they actually come into the game. But for now it is um, the starting bonuses of the horse got changed, villagers repair uh, build and repair 30% faster is gone and Etia and Brock can build, repair, mine and forge 20% faster. They can build. They can build now. I'm gonna try that. I have a stream uh, not too long uh, in the future. <laughs> I will definitely try that out. That seems super sick. Uh, also they get 30% bonus for builds and repairs and Brock is uh, yeah, quicker at forging. So yeah, they get different bonus now for the different war chiefs, which is pretty interesting to be honest. 
Uh, at 200 fame, you will get Craftsman. So the upgraded tools, 10% bonus is gone. Uh, when in the same zone as War Chiefs, when in the same zone, War Chiefs mine and forge 50% faster. So if you do it with them together, you're usually still better on, yeah, better on doing that. Selling stone or irons earns 20% uh, extra crowns and neutral factions will accept stone and iron and allies and neutral factions receive double the resources. So there are basically a few things that state as it were. Uh, I think selling stone and iron is definitely a change and this year obviously. But I think that the neutral factions will accept stone and iron and allies and that were also before. I'm not 100% sure. So at 500 fame, you will get Earth Legacy. You discover two stone, two iron deposits in your uh, territory. Recruit. You can build a second relic is gone, but zones uh, with or adjacent an active relic gain 50% production. Interesting, but you will not be able to get a second one anymore. Uh, cool, cool, cool. But 15% is still a pretty big bonus. Uh, the metalcraft lore is removed. Uh, I think also because like the, yeah, basically the war chiefs get other bonuses over here. Uh, quality of lives replaces erudition, so it's a tier 3 lore now, interesting. And the Verlon Fire is a new lore, replacing colonization, tier 2 lore in the upper tree. Uh, forging tools, weapons and relics give you fame. Improved tools for civilians get you an additional plus 10% production bonus, so that's basically what the 200 fame bonus gave you. Cool, cool, cool. But you will need to go for the upper tree for that. I don't know if you really want to do that. We'll see. Uh, excavation replaces mining efficiency. So tier 2 lore. Okay. What if chiefs produce 5 lore for each ore extracted? So that's a lot less. That's a lot less. But still. Uh, good lore bonus right here. And you will get it a lot earlier because it's a tier 2 lore now. And yeah. Mining efficiency were never a thing for, uh, for the horse anyway. Uh, also, we'll get ancestral influence. Relics don't use a building slot. Zones will blah 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 blah. Uh, relics don't use a building slot. You can build a second relic. There we go. There's the 500 fame bonus. You will now get it an ancestral influence. I think that this is a tier four lore though. It's pretty hard to get, but if you can get it, um, you will forge it also in 50% less time, which is super quick. Maybe there will be double relic builds out of there, right? You try to get this lore ASAP and then you start forging relics in no time. Could be really cool. Maybe opens up a new way here. But now let's jump into a clan, which uh, is really close to my heart, let's say. Uh, we feel we felt stack was a bit underwhelming. So we tried to redefine his personality and give him cool tools to play with. That's what we needed. Mostly by playing around fame and expansion. And that is what the stack clan really wants to do, right? So um, at five, 200 fame, you got supplies. Da da da. Uh, the boat, uh, each year a boat gave you 500 food, wood and money. Uh, right now you will get 50 food, wood and money for every 200 fame you reach. So every 200 fame the boat comes and gives you new resources and not uh, the boat will come each year, which can mean if you really pop up with the stack that you will get um i think you can reach 600 fame until uh 802 if you really really have a great start that means you get those resources three times throughout this time that is pretty good to be honest i like that that makes it a little bit easier and if you have games where you really pop off you're not held back by this each year other way around in the long games, you know, in the really, really long games, will not be have that much of a bonus through getting this bonus each year. But in the really long game, you will also get insanely high in fame. Ah, yeah, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. It's a pretty cool uh, change right here, and I like it a lot more than a boat coming each year, to be honest. Um, at 500 fame, you will get dedic dedication annexation. Okay, now we get annexation, let's say. Uh, upgraded units gain 20% production bonus is gone. All units get 1% is also gone. Uh, for each 200 fame, the colonization price is decreased by 5% and unit production is increased by 3%. So yeah, at 600 fame again, you will get a 10% production bonus roughly. No, 9% obviously, exactly. It is okay, it is okay, the colonization price hmm, is a big thing for stack because you don't get colonization because there are silo uh, lures on that spot. But, hmm, 
Hmm. Do you get colonization as stack now? I think they actually changed it into get colo as stack. Yeah. 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 You just don't get it because you usually go for the silo lore. But hey. Um, that can be pretty cool for you winning fame, right? That can be pretty cool for you winning fame. I don't see any other use cases for this all too much other than the production bonus, of course, that can really help you out. Um, fame, at 1000 fame, you will get Valorous Leader. Your wall chief gains the Valorous Leader ability. His base defense is also increased by 100% and his health by 60% at 1000 fame. Okay, so you get a pretty sick wall chief at that point. Uh, that seems to be really strong here. <laughs> 1000 fame is not easy to get though, so um, more of a free for all thing I guess I'll, or the stack plan will be played a lot different in team games but I can't really see it reaching 1000 fame in a team game to be honest. Seems to be more like a dual and free for all thing. So food preservation, each silo gets you plus 3 food and uh, plus 5 food if upgraded, the happiness is gown. Young and proud won't increase your military unit's attack power for free per, by three percent for every happiness you have. It will now increase your military unit's attack power by two percent per zone you control. Okay, so you, you will want to control a lot more zones on stack right now, which means silo build will be a lot stronger than it were before, right? Yeah, you get a lot of fame for different stuff right now that were like the. Um, Carpentry Mastery build, so you will just try to get a lot of bonus here to for a lot of fame, so your production bonus is a lot higher. For now, you want to get a lot of zones usually though, and a lot of zones means you want to get silos. So I, we will see how you play that out in game. Um, I right now feel like the silo build is a little bit stronger than before, but there might be a few things that I don't see. Uh, Glory of the Clan also got changed. The fame gains uh, are now up to 30% instead of 20 and increases gains from trade routes and great trade routes by 10% each 200 fame. Ah, okay, it's not locked at 220% uh, anymore. It's now 10% and for each 200 fame on f f uh, 400 or 600 fame to get to that point shouldn't be too hard if you get that. Mm, seems pretty good, seems pretty good. I don't know how much trading you're gonna be doing with the stack clan, but this definitely opens up the door for uh, pretty good stuff because like you're gonna be pretty easily on 600 fame if you have a great start. If you then choose to, I don't know, trade giants, the 30% bonus on the trade can be pretty good. Maybe something in there, we will see. But let's look at the relic right here, the Hilskalf. They get a huge change. It isn't anymore that your war chief goes onto a zone, and if you decolonize that zone, it is yours. Um, now you can transform warriors into Einherjar by assigning them to Hilskalf. Einherjars are proud warriors that want to partake in the most glorious battles possible. Their base attack power is increased with fame and they benefit from all warrior upgrades. They cost more crowns and consume 50% more food. Okay, so it's a, uh, yeah, 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 let's see, let's see. Their power is increased with fame and, uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, we will see how strong they actually are, but consuming 50% more food is definitely a big thing. So I think you usually want to get them. And then hopefully lose them quite quickly because they cost so much or better you win the game or they're just so strong that the 50% are just too important. We will see, but um, seems to be quite interesting changes here for the stack clan and I'm definitely hyped to try it out in game. So now we are on the clan of the dragon. Draconic Frenzy, um, bodyguard is no longer counted in the effect, okay? So if you have a war chief with a bodyguard behind him, the bodyguard doesn't count and he will still do a hell of a lot of damage. Uh, Dragonkin recruitment priced increased by 10 crowns for each Dragonkin you already own, so it will be a little bit easier to get a mass of Dragonkin. That's definitely a good change right there. And this is it already for the changes for Dragon Clan, so not that much right here. And we can see here for all the other clans also just small changes here and yeah let's see for brunner and kellen the clan of the lynx we have uh, with the military path we worked we wanted to adjust the hunting path to give the clan of the lynx a little bit more versi uh, versatility sharp eyes and grape hunt swapped positions so that's what i mean 
a great hunt is now a tier one um, ability so it's a lot easier to get therefore it's a lot easier to also gain um, hunting hunting trophies through killing draugars and other mystical creatures that wouldn't usually give it that's the bonus you get through uh, the great hunt and i think it also helps you with the bonies right you will have not that many malices anymore if you fight outside of your territory i think that we're also in great hunt maybe i'm mixing something up there uh, nature freedom is removed therefore you will get experienced hunters uh, mil military units that participated in the focal permanently gain plus five percent attack power up to a maximum of 25 percent uh, and if they die they will lose it Ah, so you basically have veteran units, right? If you have units that already fought before, you will really want to keep them and not getting back into a village just because they permanently gain 5% attack power. Maybe they will also remember it. So if you get the last villager that did it, you get him back into an archer and he will get the attack power back. I don't think it will there. I don't think it will. I think if you uh, lose the unit or you get back into a villager it will be gone but if not it would be really cool to be honest then you have like a uh, sorted out veteran which is now working on a field but hey james we need you back for a battle here like, ah, i stop with that yeah you know what i mean <laughs> so like, so like really cool really cool i like it so, uh, the Clan of the Ox has Ferocious Charge changed. Uh, forged melee units can use the charge ability and gain 30% damage on a charge attack. Weapons are 100% faster to forge and cost 50% less. Seems to be pretty similar to the one before. Maybe I'm... Uh, maybe just a small number change or something. Uh, shield Mastery. Also got a little change here for the Clan of the Bear. Uh, shield Bearer weapons is free. So the weapon upgrade is free, I guess. And increases the resistance of all military units by 10%. So even for warriors and everything else, maybe gives you a little bit less of an incentive to go for Shield Bearers because their Shield Bearer camps are also not free from taxes that were the... Uh, bonus you would get before from shield mastery and really lead you into only getting shield bearers because the camps were free you don't need to pay taxes for them um, right now it will give you a bonus for all your military units so incentivizes you a little bit more to mix it up you know um, so we have the clan of the squirrel with the banquet of Valhul. Uh, the special victory of the squirrel has been decolorated from the fame. Now you must have at least six active cooks to prepare the meal. Even during the preparation, preparation time has been increased to six months. So it's a little bit harder to win like that. But I think it's a little bit easier to get six active cooks instead of 1000 fame. So that might be a little way to... To squeeze some wins through in a free-for-all or something. <laughs> I see. I, I, I need to try something there. Just give me a minute. Uh, let's go over to the clan of the rat here. We have overwork. Overwork now gives a 40% units production at the cost of their health. So it's a little bit stronger. And when... Uh, ah, yeah, the 200 fame bonus got a little bit reduced. So maybe it will now be a little bit different and not you get all your whole eco into the main tile and just, uh, yeah, take advantage of this year, the 50% less food bonus. Uh, would be really cool uh, definitely would uh, widen the clan's abilities and strategies up a little bit and not be the okay i have all my units on the main tile i pump out shamans and i build uh yeah or shaman camps all the way just to get the purification pyres which also got changed because now when the clan kills uh kills foes or foes die out of your clan all your shaman camps uh pyres ignite when when active you produce plus, plus dot five lore and new villagers arrive faster so you basically just nerf the lore a little bit which i think is fair because we're insanely strong but if you, we, we go away from the strategy having all villagers on the main tile you will also have a lot less shaman camps because you basically just built that many shaman camps because you didn't want to build anything else right because it didn't make sense why would you build a farm when you want to have all your villagers on the main tile anyway so they produce 50 percent less food so yeah that's a point of discussion i don't know if it 
will quite be enough to get the rat to where it wants to be but it's really really a step in the right direction and i still had fun with the clan right it's a fun clan to play it's just uh, it feels like okay uh, that's that's not how it's supposed to be right but uh i really really like the clan still and let's see if that will be enough to bring it back onto the map so at last we have a few general changes uh stats at the end of the game display more information yeah there's a little bit more in this uh statistics now at the end of the game improved key bindings com complex key combinations can be used like control alt shift free ah, okay you can now um the extra buttons on the mouse can also be bound i love it i love it that weren't possible before and now you can also go for more co complex key combinations if you're interested into doing so that's it's pretty cool. Uh, building a training camp is no longer a requirement to build other camps, so you can build all the camps from the start of the game. And you can now recruit your war chief in other military camps except for clans Snake, Dragon, Horse, Rat and Lynx. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ah, okay, yeah, that's what I mean. Like for Lynx, you can only get your War Chief and Lynx in the uh, Tracker Hut right now. You cannot get it in the War Chief camp anymore. You might know that if you saw my video from yesterday, but um, that's why I just were a little bit confused because I definitely know that Lynx, uh, you can't recruit him in a normal military camp. Um, yeah, let's see. Also, the Supply Malus has been reworked. I don't know how exactly um yeah that's it <laughs> uh the bug fixes we have right here the ba bear spawn correctly prioritize spawns with fish nearby ah, okay they didn't do that before lore stone spawning in the second circle from a town hall should be less frequent okay if a town hall is destroyed by the burning effect the player will be defeated yeah before you weren't defeated but you didn't get new villagers which is not that great uh scouts of the clan of the dragon will no longer trigger attack notifications while going through neutral factions yeah that always happened to me that were a little weird uh players units will now no longer make sidesteps when trying to attack another unit yes yes that uh, the second stack bonus from conquest has been fixed Will villagers are correctly affected by silos i love it uh, the rally point behavior has been fixed you can now transfer uh, transfer zones with towers on it and red lang the red can no longer use houses ah i guess some other teammate of you could have just built a house and then kicked the tile over to you and I think that will now not work anymore. It will just be a dead building. Interesting. <laughs> cool that that were even possible before. Didn't even knew that. But uh, yeah. So. I guess with this. We are actually through all the changes here. That are in the open beta. Like I said. Everything is subject to change here. So there might be a few changes before the live update. If you want to jump in. Just jump back to the start of the video. Where I explained how you can actually jump into the open beta. I'm having a lot of fun in it. And I feel like a lot of really really important changes here. That make the game a lot more fun. Uh, I would like to know what you think about the new open beta. And the changes that they have been making to the game. Maybe just leave them down below in the comments um if you enjoyed this video here you might also want to leave a little like the below the video so it gets uh, promoted to more people and uh, they can actually see what is going on with the new update over here i hope you all have a great rest of the day that you enjoyed this in the end pretty long video but there are also quite a lot of changes so yeah hope you had a great time maybe see you back on the next one and bye bye see ya